Welcome to Code.org App Lab Simple Bouncing Ball Tutorial with me, Tokyo EdTech. So today we're going to show you how to make a ball that bounces on the screen. To do that, we need to know a few concepts. Um, these are, I don't know, kind of coding concepts, but also a little bit of physics concepts. So we have a location of the ball, and that's going to be our X and Y coordinates. We have the movement of the ball represented by dx and dy. d is uh, Greek for delta, and it means change. So if you're moving to the right, your x is changing by a certain amount. That's your dx. If you're moving uh, to the left, your dx is moving, your x is changing by dx in a negative direction, which we'll see in a little bit. And then border checking. What happens when we get to the bottom of the screen or the right side of the screen, the left side of the screen? Actually, I forgot one there. We also got to deal with gravity. So we'll go ahead and, yeah, let's get started. So here I am on code.org. Now, if you haven't done anything with code.org, this may not be the right tutorial to start with. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Create, and you'll see a bunch of different choices. Again, I'm assuming you already have an account and all that sort of thing. Now, I'm going to be using App Lab because that's what my students are using. There is also one called Game Lab, uh, but we're going to do App Lab because we're working on app program. And some apps, of course, are games. So there we go. So now it will create a blank project for you. It'll take a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. And I'm going to call this uh, you know, Bouncing Ball Tutorial. Very, very original. Uh, tutorial with Tokyo Ed Deck. Always got to get my branding in there and save that. It's always good to give it a name so you don't have a bunch of projects called Untitled Project. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with design. Okay? And when you start code.org, you're given a screen. I don't like calling it the stuff screen one, so I'm going to call this SCR. I guess I can call it main, or I can call it game. Yeah, I'll call it main for now. And I'm going to change the background color. I want it to be black, so I'm going to do 0, 0, and 0. Okay, You can see how it's already done that. So if I hit run, Okay, I have a blank screen. Yay. Okay, not, not very useful at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and hit reset. Now, for me to do graphics, there is a, an HTML element called a canvas. And as you can guess, that is where we're going to draw stuff. So you can see over here, we have a canvas. So I'm just going to drag that into my screen. I'm going to put that into the top left. Okay. Now, while you're looking at it, you see how those numbers are? You've got, what, 0, 0, y is 5. It's hard to get that right, but long story short, the top left corner is 0, 0. I'm going to go ahead and drag this out. Now I could drag it all the way to the bottom, I'm gonna, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Leave it about right here. And Oops, my computer's not letting go. Why is that? Hit enter. Does that help? And it's locking up, which is lovely. Hit escape. That didn't do it. I'm just going to hit reset, and, or re reboot, or reload, refresh and do it again. It does get stuck sometimes. You know, go back to design. Um, and again, I know I could edit things like that out, but I think it's important to see that this process does not always go smoothly. And what do you do? So I've got a canvas, and I'm going to call this uh, canvas. Probably if it was a game, I would probably call it game, but I'll just call it main as well. And what I'm, I want you to see is that we've got SCR main and we've got canvas main. So I know SCR main is a screen. I know canvas is, or CNV is a canvas. And I didn't have to do CNV, it's just what I chose to use. Now you'll see it's 320 pixels wide and 385 pixels tall. It's at 0x, it starts up here, and 0y. So that means across we're looking at 320, down we are looking at 385. Now notice as x goes to the right, it increases. As it goes to the left, it decreases. As y goes down, it increases. As it goes up, it decreases. So y is backwards to probably what you're used to, say, from math class. Okay. So at this point, we've created all of the design elements that we need. Now, this was a game. We'd have some buttons down here, and we could do some different things with the keyboard. But for this, we're just learning the basic concepts. So I'm going to go over to my code. Okay. Now, if I go back to coding concepts, Okay, I said that we're going to need a location, uh, an X and Y. We're going to need movement, so how is the ball moving? And then we're going to check for borders. And again, I forgot to put gravity on here, but we'll leave it like that. 
because mistakes are made from time to time. So I'm going to go to variables. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start creating the variables I need. Now notice this starts with var, the var keyword. I only do this once. This is when I initially create the variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my first variable ball x. And I'm going to start the ball somewhere around here. So let's see. So maybe make that 160. And I'm going to make a ball y. I'm going to make that, uh, let's see here, about, we'll say 40. What the heck? And then I'm going to make ball dx. And that's going to be 0. I'm going to make ball dy. And that's also going to be 0. So what I need to do is I'm going to go back to my canvas. And I have to do something called set active canvas. I have to tell the program this is the canvas that I'm using. And this is again, this is why I use proper names. Now I could clearly I could have other canvases, but for this project I'm only going to have one. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a color, and that is where is it? Um, set fill color. There it is. And I'm going to go ahead and make my ball green. I don't know why I always I usually choose green. It's a color I like. And then my circle, I'm going to use a circle, obviously, for my ball. And I'm going to put in here ball x, and I'm going to put ball y. And I'm going to think I'm going to make this 20. Let's try 20 for now. Okay. Now you notice these little yellow triangles. This says ball dx is defined, but it's not called in your program. So I've created it, but I haven't used it anywhere. And we'll, we'll get to that later. But ball x and ball y, I have used. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit run. Hopefully, if everything goes well, we'll see a ball right here in the middle of the screen. Fantastic. Okay, so this is how we're going to get started. And you know, as a beginning programmer, yeah, you just kind of beginning programmers tend to just like throw everything in and hope it works. Um, but you'll see how I do a little bit, test it, make sure it works. Then I do a little bit, test it, make sure it works. If you do that, it'll be a lot easier to find the problems in your program. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to make the ball go down. Okay, so the the movement of the ball up and down is controlled by ball dy. Okay, so right now it's zero. I'm going to set it to five. Okay, and then what that will do is that is a downward direction. And so what's supposed to happen is every uh, frame, and I'll get to that in a second is it's going to go plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. Now let's go ahead and, tr and run this. Because this is, again, this is one of those things, beginners, you have these weird ideas that things just happen. <laughs> they don't just happen. Um, you got to program. So if I hit run, nothing happens. Okay. Now notice, I still got this little yellow triangle. And it says I've defined it, but I haven't called it. So what I need to do is the following. I need to go back to my variable section. I'm not going to choose this. I'm going to choose this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say ball y equals ball y plus ball dy. Now the capitalization has to be the same. Notice I capitalize d and x here, capitalize d and y. So what this does is it takes ball y, which starts at 160, takes 160 plus ball dy, which is 5. So this is 165, and it changes ball y to 165. So let's go ahead and reset that. Now look where that's at. And I'm going to run it again. And I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> Nothing happened. Um, partly, there's two reasons. One is the program ended here. Okay, So if I move this down here, okay, watch where it's at. Reset. I don't know if you can see it, it moved down just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Okay. But then it stopped. Okay. Again, this is because this is how we programmed it. So probably in previous programs, if you're one of my students, we did things where you push a button, you enter some text, and then things happen. So in this program, we need to do something new, which is called a timed loop. You'll see it down here. You'll see where it says timed loop MS means milliseconds and callback. So I'm going to pull this out. 
And you'll see where it says timed loop 1000. What that means is every one second, 1000 milliseconds, it's going to do whatever is inside of this loop. Okay. Now there's nothing there. But what we want to happen is we want to set the color to green. We want to move the ball and draw the ball. Okay. Actually, maybe we should put this there. Maybe it makes a little more sense. Okay. So here we update the ball Y. We set the color again, just in case to make sure, because if we're going to draw different things, they might have different colors. And we're going to draw the circle. So now, this is going to repeat every second. So let's go ahead and hit reset and run. Okay, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. Okay. So the ball is falling. Now, not, obviously not as fast as we would like, um, but it is falling. Okay, so I'm going to hit reset on that. So what I want to do is I want to change this to 50 milliseconds. So 50 milliseconds, that means 20 frames per second, which for our purposes should be enough. So now watch what happens. Okay, so you can see the ball is falling and it falls right off the uh, canvas. Now it's still going, you just can't see it. Okay, so we got another problem to fix. Okay, the, the ball, there's still pieces of the ball there. So to fix that, we're gonna go back to canvas and there's a command called clear canvas. So inside our loop, okay, we need to clear the canvas, update the ball Y coordinate, set the color and draw the ball. So we hit run and this is what we have now. Okay, very, very exciting. Now you notice again, I'm doing some stuff, I'm testing it, there's a problem, I'm fixing it. I'm not going ahead and just doing stuff that you know, I haven't done yet. Um, yeah, for some weird reason, again, beginners, they think, well, okay, that's not working. I'll just go do something else. And that's just like the worst thing you can do. Okay, so stop, fix where you're at. Okay, now, the next thing. I could, I could start looking at the DX at this point, but I want the ball to bounce. Okay, so the ball comes down. If I run it again, the ball comes down. And when it gets to about here, it should bounce in the other direction. Okay, I guess right about there. Okay, so the Y coordinate here is about 385, but remember the ball has a diameter of, I think this is diameter or, I'm sure it's diameter or radius. So does it tell us if we click that? No, um, let's see your circle, it's a radius. So that means from here to the center of the ball is 20. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check, I'm gonna say if, it doesn't matter if I do it here or up there, it's, it's not a big deal. Ball Y is greater than 365. And 365 is 385 minus 20, the radius. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set ball Y to 365. And I'm going to reverse ball dy. To do that, I multiply, which is an asterisk, by negative one. Okay, if I click out of here, it turns into you know, block code. So one more time. So if the ball y goes out of the screen, or out of the canvas, I'm going to put the ball y back to 365, and then I'm going to reverse dy so it goes up. So let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. It's coming down. Da, 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 da. Remember the line is down here somewhere and you saw how it bounced. Now again, it's not a perfect bounce, but you get the idea. Now notice it goes up and off the screen because we have not accounted for gravity. Okay. So that's our next step is gravity. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable for gravity and I'm just going to set it to one. I, I don't know if that's a good number, but we'll try it. Notice I capitalized the G because gravity doesn't change. But what I need to do is down here is the following. Ball dy equals ball dy plus G for gravity. This is because gravity affects the speed of, fall, uh, the speed of falling. So the ball is falling at five then it's falling at 6, then it's falling at 7, then it's falling at 8, then it's falling at 9. Gravity affects ball dy. It doesn't affect ball y. Okay, 
ball y is affected by ball dy. Ball dy is affected by gravity. Okay, This is physics stuff. If you haven't studied that yet, don't worry. Just trust me on this. So now watch what happens. Okay, see how it's falling faster, 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 slowing, 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 slowing. Faster, 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 slowing, slowing, slowing. Pretty cool. Uh, it looks just like a real ball bouncing. Now, due to some like mathematical stuff, it may just eventually slow down and stop. Don't stress about that. Um, so I'm gonna hit reset. Now, what I wanna do is the same thing for left and right. Like, remember, gravity doesn't affect left and right, okay? Gravity affects up and down. So I'm finally gonna get to use my DX. So I'm just gonna follow this pattern here. And I'm going to say that ball x equals ball x plus ball dx. Now again, if you don't understand the physics of it, you know, just you can just copy. You just you don't have to understand exactly how it works. We need to understand. You do need to understand that ball dy affects ball y, and ball dx affects ball dx. And then I need to set ball dx to some value. Let's I'll do five again. Why not? And I hit run. Let's see what happens. Okay, now notice how it bounces right off the screen. <laughs> okay, so I have to do the border checking. So that was, you know, make sure the border is dealt with. So it's about 320. So I'm going to do the same thing I did here. I'm going to go to control. I'm going to do if. Again, this again has to be inside this loop. Ball x is greater than, I think it's 360. That's 360, so minus 20 is 340. You might have to play with the numbers. I do. I play with them all the time until I get what I want. Sorry, I know my voice is a little raspy. It's a little dry and cold today. Um, ball x equals 340. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to reverse it. So ball x equals ball, oops, ball dx. Sorry about that. Very easy to get wrong. Ball dx equals ball dx times negative 1. And again, I'm going to test this to make sure it works. Okay, boom, boom. Okay, well maybe, so it still went off the screen. So this is 320, so I should make this 300. That's why I went the wrong way. 300, 300. Okay, let's run that. And okay, you see how it bounced off the wall. Now again, it's gonna go off the screen all the way off here. Hit reset. Uh, but I'm going to do basically the same thing, but watch carefully because this is something, again, beginners mess up every single time. Um, I'm going to the left this time, so it's going to be ball x is less than. Notice on the right side it's greater than, on the left side it's less than. This is 0, the ball's diameter is 20, so I'm going to use 20 as my number. Okay, back up the variables. Notice again, I'm not using var x here, I'm just using x. So ball x equals 20. And again, ball dx, I need to reverse. Now we want to go back the other way. So ball dx equals ball dx times negative 1. Okay, and I'm going to run it. And now we have a functioning bouncing ball. Now it'll probably be a little faster on your computer because I'm recording the screen, everything slowed down a bit. But you can see how it gets to the edge of the canvas and bounces. And voila, we have a bouncing ball with realistic physics. We're using gravity, we're using dx and dy, we're using x and y, and we're checking for the borders. So let me go ahead and just run through that again. Our ball has four values associated with it, an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, which is where it is on the screen, a dx and a dy, which is the speed of motion, uh, we have gravity, which we've set to 1, and you can play with the numbers, it doesn't really matter. Um, and it's positive because it's in this particular system, positive is down. We've set our active canvas to canvas main. And our time loop, every 50 milliseconds, that's, once, that's 20 times a second, we clear the canvas, we update ball dy with gravity, we update ball y with ball dy, we update ball x with ball dx, we draw our ball, now again, I could have put the drawing part down here. It's not going to affect anything um, because it's a loop. I could just I could set it down here. If that makes more sense to you, that's fine. It actually kind of makes more sense to me. I'm going to hit reset and test it. Okay, I made a change. It's still working. Um, now, if the ball goes off the screen here, oh sorry, off the screen here, 
we put it back to this, that point and then reverse Y. So it goes up. If it goes off the screen to the right, we set it back and reverse DX. And if it goes off to the left, we set it back to that point and reverse DX. So it's just going to bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce. Now you can play with the numbers and make it bounce faster and you know, kind of see what happens. Uh, but that's the gist of basic like physics animation. So going back to our coding concepts, we have our XY, our DX, DY, border checking. Again, I forgot gravity. But I could have also added a few things about you know, looping and just different coding things that maybe you haven't done before. But overall, I think it's pretty straightforward. So uh, yeah, that's it. Um, keep on coding. Take care.